Hi everyone, hope you're well. Reason for this little video, of course, is as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be um, adding to our little dragon decanter. Now what I have done, actually I need a white background for this probably, yeah, there we are. I have sketched very roughly some scales only because I looked it up and really the Chinese dragon needs to have uh, a scaly effect even if it is just a very simple one, just a suggestion of scales. Uh, so, um, and mine didn't. I don't know what mine looked like and I, I think I was probably trying to get out of it because scales are not easy and they are there are several ways of engraving them and perhaps I'll do another video showing the different ways but I have decided to do probably one of the most simplest ways and um, and that is just the look of fish scale shapes and line uh, like outline them if you like with a little white arkansas which will give them the little um, softer tone shaded outline. Um, I'll let you have a closer look at that again. I started off actually by by drawing uh, a sort of a cross hatchy, not a cross hatch, um, yeah I suppose you could call it a cross hatch effect but I didn't like it uh, and I struggled with it and in the end I decided I'm just going to make it up as I go along with these little sort of like you do as a child drawing little scallops and building them like bricks so you have two and then one in the middle and so on and so forth as the layers go by. Um, also you may have noticed I will add some flames to the pearl that's part of the story is to have flames coming out from the pearl which I had omitted um, I had omitted to add so I think that's just about all we have to do with this now um, and I'm getting a new camera holder and so that will be very interesting to see if it makes a difference I'm waiting for it to arrive today so hopefully this video well, the rest of this video will be made at a slightly different angle to usual. It's one of these things that attaches to the tripod and then unfolds and then I can hopefully look over the engraving a little bit more accurately than I'm doing at the moment. So that'll be really interesting. And um, interesting are the eyelashes. <laughs> Never worn false eyelashes before. So in case you're wondering what what um, <laughs> the look is today, why not? It's a bit of fun, and it's these these new magnetic things. And I thought that to me sounds easier than all the other bits of gluey stuff. Blech. Not my cup of tea, but um, I thought I'd give it a go and have some fun. And so why not? Okay, guys. Let's get on with the video. Well, two things really. First of all, the eyelashes didn't last very long. I ripped them off. I didn't. <laughs> I found them a little bit irritating, so off they came. Um, they'll just be for dress ups and fun, I think. And um, secondly, I had not realised that I had, in fact, changed my mind, and it wasn't an attachment that goes on the tripod that's going to hold the um, camera. It's actually a whole um, sort of one of these angle poise things with an attachment on the end and that can come right over the top. So as you can see, we are looking directly down onto the decanter. Uh, this is a, a fascinating, but I'm I'm noticing that the lights are coming more into play. In actual fact, and I'm talking about the ceiling lights, 
Um, and in fact, this is quite a difficult shape. It's very, very rounded. So it, it is going to pick up every single light anyway. Uh, but I've got to be careful now. I might I might consider some sort of overhead shade or something or take out the middle bulb that's above me of the strip lights. Um, we'll see. Anyway, off we go. Um, using a white Arkansas, quite a, a small one with a little point. Um, I've slightly flattened the top or rounded the top of it. And I am gently going over without sticking absolutely rigidly to my drawing, but just going over roughly what I have sketched on. Now, I used a non-permanent pen like I usually do, and so this will not remain in the glass, providing I wash it off. Um, it is just there so that I can get an idea for the moment, and it will be washed off soon enough. Um, but as I said, keeping these little scallopy effects very, very simple, I don't want to... I don't want to do deep 3D scale for scales. <laughs> I only want to give the impression of them. I did draw this several times. I tried the um, the crisscrossing of the lines going around the body. It was really quite tricky. And so I have just done simple scales. Here I'm flattening again. Uh, this tiny little white Arkansas just to give it that little bit of an edge and so it is it's actually digging into the engraving quite effectively I really I'm not pressing very hard the drill is not going more than about 20,000 rpm it really does not need to go very fast you will burn the glass if you go very fast with the white Arkansas. And an actual fact, only today, <laughs> I was trying to do an experiment for you guys because only today I had forgotten I had it on the high speed and I revved it up. And my new machine is so super smooth. I can't even tell when it's turning. It's amazing. You can't hear it and you can't feel the vibration. Anyway, so, so I was engraving um, a dog's nose. And I had the white Arkansas in my drill to to engrave the, the top of the nose. And I thought, wow, that looks strange. And it had literally burnt into the glass, which was in fact lead crystal, um, because it was going at about 40,000 RPM. It's an amazing effect. And there is only one thing to do. It sort of crackles. And so you have to get rid of that. Um, you know, it creates these tiny little shards, in fact. And so I had to grab a, I had a tiny green stone um, which was a little bit rough and it was enough. Otherwise, I would have actually taken a diamond and I would have gone over it um, <clears throat> just to smooth it out because you've got to get rid of these little burnt shards. So just remember, White Arkansas does not need to go fast. Okay, so we're we're gently going along. You can't really see very clearly what the effect is yet uh, it really does need to be uh, cleaned up and polished a little bit I'm not going to polish each line but by polishing sort of giving some more shading to the edges it will using a soft rubber will go into the white Arkansas I'm not engraving very deep but it is going into the diamond very effectively
There's no point in doing this at high speed. I know it's very tempting to. But I was going deliberately and gently and I had left the effect I had underneath which it almost looks like it's going in a different direction but it's not it's just giving you the impression of it being rounded underneath those lines that are, are sort of curvy and these little scales are all you need to just give the impression giving it a, a very quick little wipe down. You can already see the effects of the white Arkansas quite clearly now. It has a an almost shiny effect, in fact. You need to experiment with the white Arkansas because they're... Um, if you use a little spare piece of glass, you will see that if, it's, if you pull it the one way and push it the other way, like engrave towards you and engrave away from you, it has a different effect. It does sl something slightly different. One will be a darker effect and the other slightly lighter. And I've always noticed this all my engraving years. And it, I've never heard anyone mention it before. Right, we're on to the flames now. I'm using the white Arkansas to create the slightly duller outer flame. Not going deep. Obviously, a flame is, well, it's a funny old thing, but it's not solid. Um, how fat is a flame? <laughs> Never thought about it. <laughs> it's, I don't, it's not flat like a piece of paper. Uh, how very weird. Never thought about it. Okay, so I'm just going very lightly. So this is not going very deep. And you may say, well, it is only a white Arkansas. White Arkansas can, can carve into the glass fair, fairly well. I'm doing the odd little wobbly bit of sort of heat or almost smoke coming up, if you like. Just making it up a bit, really. I've gone for a cup of tea, it seems. Okay, I'm back. I know what I went to do. I actually looked up images of flames very briefly. I know we, we know flame very well, but all of a sudden I went blank and I thought, uh, right, I do need to look it up. You, you picture a little cartoon candle and yeah, basically that's it. But for one brief moment I thought, well, um, was it dark on the outside and light on the inside or the other way around? <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. But of course, that bright bit of flame in the middle is um, obviously it's lighter than the outer part of the flame, which is in fact, if I can remember correctly, that is the hotter part on the outside of the, fl of the flame, the top of the flame. Anyway. Uh, so that's all I had to do really uh, is just add these little little highlights in the middle of the flame like candles What I could have done Ooh, yeah, I could have done one in front of the claw and pearl, but because I'd gone so deep that would have been quite a mission I've got a, a, a rubber. I just wanted to test here so I've got my scrap piece of glass and as you can see I just 
wanted to see the effect of what it does on its own on the glass will it look effectively like little bits of heat coming off you can see there is something there there it could work and so I go for it it's very dull you will only see it in certain light really Now you can see, just looking at the claw and the pearl, I will just explain again. I, I had engraved that really deep. So if I was to make the flames come in front as well as above and behind, um, I would have had to engrave deeper than what I'd already have en had engraved. And it really, I would really needed, would have needed to do that. And I could have done that um, to put a, more of a 3D effect with the flames, but yeah, didn't bother. So I'm just um, touching up the shading, which I thought needed a little bit more um, around the edges. With the rubber, any rubber, probably a harder rubber. Now here I have got a large fresh diamond which all I wanted to do was highlight the middle of the pearl a bit. It does look a little bit wonky. I think I, I sort that out afterwards. Sometimes I can't see very accurately. At least with this new camera setup, I don't feel as though my head is in the way. I've taken a small brown rubber to show up the claws. So just touching the edges of the claws, which are obviously really deep. So by just touching up the edges, it's really simply picking up the upper surface and polishing it. It won't go into the claws because they are pretty deep. So up with my little test bit of glass and I have got a very sharp flame shape. Um, you could use a rat's tail or a tiny round burr, but I think probably a rat's tail or a new rat's tail at least. This is quite a new burr. It's very, very sharp on the edges. And I just wanted to get stuck into the very, very points of those claws. You could do the same with the teeth. I didn't actually. Yeah, perhaps I should have. Maybe it's an old dragon. <laughs> anyway, so just touching up all the claws. Well, some of the claws. You can see where I'm I'm putting the point down directly at the end and just pushing and pushing down and pulling it back and there you end up with a neat claw.
that was just a little bit on his elbow or knee elbow I don't know elbow <laughs> And then, of course, now, having added those little claws, well, the sharpness of them, I'm coming back with my little brown rubber to once again go over the very edges. Easily picked up because obviously they're deep. To add that little bit of shadow. This is a useless, uh, useless, useful little tool. It's a bit of a brush. I don't use it in the drill. All it does, because it's very, very hard, um, I don't know what kind of hair it is, but it's really tough. And when you've got some really deep engraving, uh, quite often you can get bits of uh, glass dust stuck inside. And I just... Give it a bit of a rub and out it comes. I don't know what I'm pointing at. <laughs> uh, but I have a feeling it is the lumpy bits around the body. And I've got the white Arkansas in my hand. I know that I had in my mind that they were sticking out a little bit too much. I wanted to, I don't know, just kind of soften them a little bit so they look a little bit less like octopus suckers. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it is an effect uh, that you can make up anyway. But I just ran it over the edges so that they a little bit more joined, if you like. And also it gives it a tiny half tone. Don't worry, I will touch that bit up. Yes, I definitely think that strip light above me has got to go. Or I've got to make a little... Uh, know a little little roof a little tent above above my workbench hmm an umbrella right maybe I could modify an umbrella umbrella above above the work so that I don't get the light directly from above and no I'm not superstitious <laughs> if I want to open an umbrella inside, I will. Oh dear. Sorry, guys. Um, now I have got a diamond in the drill. I'm aware that this is actually not showing up for you guys as much as it should be. The background is too bright and it's just not showing up very well. Obviously, with any new piece of equipment I've got to get used to it, I will adapt it. I will make sure that it works. I think ultimately 
it is going to be much better than the camera hanging around my ear hole and me trying not to get my head in the way. I just have to adjust my lighting and make sure that you can see things clearer. So I've got the diamond and I'm just just highlighting a little bit. couple of little highlights on the flame here as well I think I add I hope I add Ooh, maybe I don't I think that must be just about it completed. Now how simple were those scales? Out with the rubber. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our dragon and uh, have a go with that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you again next time. Bye for now.